If you're worried about your emails going to spam or your emails are already going to spam and you want to do everything you can to land in a primary inbox, then this video is for you. We're going to go over what an email bounce is and how to use email verification tools to ensure it doesn't happen. So we'll explain what that means and exactly what you can do to make sure your emails don't bounce and you land in the primary inbox. For this video, I will be having my COO and business partner, Felipe, walk you through everything. So Felipe, I will hand it over to you. Thank you for the intro as always, and let's jump straight into this. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything about email validation. Whether you're running cold email campaigns or you're running email marketing campaigns, or you're even contacting friends and other people that you want to reach out to for networking purposes, for instance. So what we're going to do first is define what is email validation, what that encompasses, and then what you can do about it. So email validation in the first place is going to be the act of checking if email accounts that you're reaching out to exist, are valid, and are functional. Right? That is the process of email validation. Why would you want to do that in the first place? Because one might argue that you can just reach out a bigger list and if they have issues, whatever, you're reaching out to a big enough list that it shouldn't affect things. Now, the problem with that is what we call a feedback loop. When you're sending emails, all of these email service providers such as G Suite, Microsoft, or even uh, dedicated IP providers such as ActiveCampaign, which are sending tools for email marketing, they are looking for a feedback loop. They are trying to spot if you are a spammer because the act of sending emails to invalid email addresses is very much correlated with spamming. And so what that actually means at the end of the day is if you're not doing your validation right, you're not checking if the email accounts reaching out to you are correct, you're going to be penalized in some way, shape or form by these email service providers. Either they're going to blacklist your IP, they're going to stop your sending, or other measures that they could put in place to make sure that you're not sending more emails out. Now, you could combat that by having a lot of email accounts and doing what's called snowshoeing, which is buying many, many email accounts, sending low volume from each, and bounces kind of become irrelevant at that point. I'll define bounces in a second. But for the sake of this video, let's say you are a good person, you're looking to do like best practices when it comes to cold email or email marketing, and you want to reach out to emails that are valid, right? And so what you can do is you can use certain tools or some methods to validate email accounts. In this video specifically, we're going to talk about tools, although I will mention what the tools check for. Now, once you run it through a tool, let's say like Million Verifier, this tool right here, or Never Bounce, which we're going to talk more about in a second, uh, what's going to happen is they are going to check the email addresses that you've given in, and they're going to result um, some different statuses. And I wanted to clarify what the statuses are. It's often going to be valid, probably valid, catch-all, invalid, or even spam trap. Now, I'll clarify on what these are. Valid, you could have guessed, this is an email account that you can send an email to and you're very unlikely to have a problem reaching them, right? Reaching their inbox or spam folder if your content is bad or if you don't have uh, all of the practices that we talk about in this channel in place. Anyways, so that is status number one. Status number two is probably valid, where they have a very high confidence that it will go through, but it's not 100% validated. How would you know the difference between the two? Valid, you would truly only know if you've emailed them and you got a reply back. That is like how you truly validate it. And most of the tools will not go to that extent unless they have their engine linked in the back end. What does that mean? Let's say I created a tool. I'll call it like the name of our company, dfimeetings.com. And dfimeetings.com, uh, as an agency, reaches out to a lot of people. They do outbound and at the same time has an email verification tool. In that case, what I can do is I can take everyone that replies from my email outbound campaigns for my clients and put in my tool as valid because I know that is valid. And a lot of tools have that. So, for example, I cannot 100% tell you this is the case, but I'm assuming very much it is. Neverbounce is owned by Zoominfo, which is a big database provider, and they have their sending tools and whatnot. And so they are very much able to realize like, hey, these are emails that we have contacted and we had no issues, right? And that has a validity date, by the way. But it is one of the ways that you can keep your database very clean and very accurate. So anyways, that is that. If you want to know 100% if it is valid, you have to email that, that account. Then we have probably valid, which is what the tools you oftentimes give you, right? Probably valid is they checked all of the external conditions that I looked for, and therefore this email is very likely to work. Then we're going to have what's called risky or catch-all, which, put it simply, 
is when you have like a domain, let's say jeffyminis.com, and on the server I say, no matter what email address someone contacts under jeffyminis.com, I want it to catch that and allow it to come through. Meaning I'm not going to necessarily just like push it back saying, hey, the email address does not exist. I want to catch that in case someone tried to contact a previous employee of mine. So this is uh, something that happens a lot in bigger corporations. They have catch-alls turned on. There are more definitions of catch-alls, but to keep it simple, it is when there is a server that will catch whatever email you contact, which might end up in front of the wrong person, right? You contact the CEO and you end up finding yourself talking to an assistant in the company. Could happen and these tools will tell you when it's a catch-all. Then you have invalid. Invalid would be, hey, it's just like an email that doesn't work, uh, it's spelled wrong, or for any other reason, it's not a good email to reach out, which we're gonna cover more in depth very soon. And then there's a spam trap. A spam trap is very easy to understand. Imagine if you are a blacklist owner, meaning you are a company that wants to punish spammers, right? What would it be the first thing that you would do as a company that wants to find spammers? Perhaps you would say, is you would go to databases where called emailers get their data from, and you would put a few of your emails in there so you can catch when they reach out to you, right? And this is a spam trap. And these tools are oftentimes able to spot when there is a spam trap in there. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced and you wanna know how, they sometimes test for auto-forwarding. They sometimes test for email accounts that don't have any footprint, meaning they don't have that account uh, assigned to other tools, right? So they don't have an account created on Facebook with that email address, for example. They don't have a footprint on it, right? So there are a few ways that you can test. And another one, of course, is if they know a few of this, this list, right? So either they have a partnership with the blacklist or they just do cold email a lot, for example, and they were able to spot all of the spam traps. So anyways, I hope that gives you a good insight into what email validation is. Now, let's talk about the feedback loop of this, right? So you took all of the statuses and let's say you reached out to, I don't know, an invalid. What is going to happen is the feedback loop is going to be a bounce. Now, what is a bounce? A bounce is this. When you receive a, a feedback, not, not every time it's like a feedback, but it's when the email that you tried to send you did not work. So what are the reasons why it wouldn't work? There are a few. So like there are a few types of bounces and not all of them are the same, of course, by definition. Now, one of the reasons why you may bounce is completely unrelated to the topic of this video. It might be that your email is just categorized as a high probability of spam. And that would mean that you're sending bad copy, but you don't have a good email infrastructure in place. And if those two things do resonate with you, please watch the other videos in this channel. We cover that in a lot of depth on how you can get out of spam, right? That's what we do as a company as well. Now, that is reason number one. Number two, and this is due to your email validation uh, in the first place, is you have an invalid email. So it was misspelled, for example, or doesn't exist anymore. Then there are temporary issues like the inbox you tried to reach was full, they don't have space, or the server had a problem processing it, or any of those things. And lastly, there is a DMARC rejection, which I'm not going to get into too much depth, but it's pretty much saying that the email tried to reach out to you or your email had a DMARC policy on, it did not meet the criteria of authentication, and therefore it was rejected. It could be also a bounce. Now, bear in mind, some ESPs, email service providers, will not share feedback. They will not let you know, hey, you have bounced. And then it becomes even more tricky for you to know if things are working or not working because it will still hurt your email account when you bounce, right? Email service providers still know that you bounced. It's just that they didn't give you the feedback. And so it will hurt your email account in the long run. It will make deliverability harder for you, right? Or at least more hands-on. Now, here's what it looks like when you launch a Podimo campaign and you have a high bounce rate, right? So for example, this is a campaign that worked because of feedback loop, because it had a fantastic reply rate, so it kept on working, but the bounce rate on a few of these were, was very high. And we're gonna talk about like, how do we fix this, right? But before I tell you how to fix it, let's talk about what to check for. So this is how these tools often perform. They check if you have MX records in the DNS settings of the domain, which is, do you have email accounts connected to this domain? Where will they point? Will they point to Google, Microsoft, whatever email service provider that you have? They will check if the domain still exists. Sometimes the domain has been deleted and then of course you're not gonna land anywhere. They're gonna check a disposable pattern, meaning is this a temporary email account that was created? And they can find it. Is the reachable SMTP server, meaning is the server able to receive an email? So pretty much they ping an SMTP for a domain and let it respond if the email that you're trying to go after exists in their domain. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's one of the checks that they perform. Next one is good syntax. Do you have the name spelled right? 
if you're reaching out to me, do you have Felipe spelled out, or do you have, or did you skip the e in my name and then flip whatever like you have may, might have put in there, right? So it's checking for good syntax. Um, even like the combination of first name, last name, it's checking for those things. The next thing it checks if it's a free email. So if it is like Gmail or Outlook, which by the way, those can be quite troublesome when it comes to outbound. Not something I'm going to cover in this video, but if you're curious about, leave a comment right below. Then aliases, meaning they have like other email accounts set up in this domain, which could be receiving those. Catch-all, which we talked about. Spam trap, which we talked about. And lastly, generic email. You're trying to reach Felipe, but you're actually reaching info at. So it might be a generic email that's monitored by someone else. And these tools oftentimes check for that. Okay? Now, now that you know that, I will show you how to do it before I tell you when you should do it, right? In this example, I'll share with you the tool that we use the most, which is Million Verifier, right? You could use Neverbounce, you could use other tools. Million Verifier is the one that we use the most. We have very good success with it. The way that you use it is very simple. You take your lit list, right? Let's say this one. You download it as a CSV file, and you're going to the platform, and you're going to select the file to upload it, right? So you select your file, and once selected, it is going to start running, right? Once it's finished running, you're gonna have the results, and then you can click on Download Reports, and you can download whatever report you want, the good emails, the risky emails, bad emails, for report, whatever. Now, you oftentimes only want to launch good emails, okay? Now, what do you do with risky and bad? You can run them through another tool, and this is called a waterfall enrichment, right? So you're using another tool to either validate or get other email accounts before you validate them again. Topic for another video if you're curious about how to maximize the data that you get, right? But for your campaigns, you should only be using good. Risky and bad, it's something up to debate. I will give you one example of a tool that, that you can validate risky emails with. It's called Scrubby. So shout out to Nick Abraham for building this tool. Love the tool. Um, you can use Scrubby to check if those risky emails that you found on Million Verify or Never Bounce are actually valid. So what you're going to do on their end is you're going to email them with copy unrelated to you and see if they get a negative feedback loop. And so this is a way for you to get more emails that you can use in your campaigns. Now, very quick tip. If you are running campaigns using risky emails, please have a set amount of email addresses assigned only to that campaign. So in case it bounces high or has a negative feedback loop, you don't burn all of your cold email sending accounts. If that flew right above your head, once again, leave a comment right down below. We can make a video talking about strategies on campaign management and making sure you have the best deliverability possible and you have a system that lasts you long, right? But that is how you do the validation. It's as simple as upload, download, take the good one, good only, launch a new campaign. Now, when in the first place should you do that? I recommend that you do that same day of the campaign launch. So you're about to launch a campaign, that's when you validate. Or, and then of course, once you like launched it, it has a validity date. So I strongly recommend that every seven to 10 days from the campaign launch and the day of validation, that you revalidate this list to make sure it's still very valid in order to avoid a high bounce rate. What is a good bounce rate? In my opinion, it is below 2%. And with Million Verifier, we tend to get 0.1%, which is fantastic, and you get very good results from it. I hope this was helpful. I hope I enlightened the way that you look at validation as a whole. And if you want to sign up to any of the tools that I mentioned here, all of the links will be below as well. I'll give the word back to Michael. Thanks for having me, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Felipe. That video was awesome. And if you watched this and want to go ahead and do the same for your campaigns, make sure to sign up for the tools. There are links in the description. And if you do want to work with us on your cold emails, you can also find links for that as well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.